Hello and welcome to the second installment of the adventures of Ferrari, the fearless hero expulse. And today we are joining the tank girls of Skinny and Yolandi for a trip up the popular Brett's Neck Pass. It's popular because it's relatively close to Joburg and it's the closest thing Joburgers have to an actual hardcore adventure pass. The road itself extends from near Moinoi on the north side of the Michalisburg Mountains. It goes over the mountain range and down to the Old Post pub along the Rustenburg Road on the south side. The pass itself is just 14 kilometers long, but the ride to get there is good fun and the pass itself isn't quite something you want to sneeze at. More so because it had unseasonably bucketed down the night before, meaning mud would add to the woes of rocks, stones and steep inclines. More more so, this would be Ferrari's first proper off-road outing and while I was quietly confident setting off into the cloudy wilderness with the two veteran off-road thumpers on their trusty DRs, there was still the element of the unknown. This unknown lasted about 300 meters into the pass when the fun started. And that's not sarcastic, this was genuinely a blast. The x 200 isn't exactly fast, but the rocks and hills up Brett's neck don't really give people the option of speed. Instead, the lightweight and lower sea type made it, well, easy. Very easy, in fact. Especially as it could go very wrong. And we came up here, and another lady was struggling to take off from here. She was spinning. Yes. And Yolanda came up, and she had to swerve last minute. And these bikes doesn't have brakes, so she tried to brake, but it doesn't have brakes. And she then went... What noise did she make? <laughs> okay, that's felt fair. <laughs> you, you yeah. <laughs> and she went. Oh, she went uh uh. And she went. Wah! In there. Okay, yeah. that's not good. And then I went. Whoa! She tried to. <laughs> what? You? <laughs> you went. Uh, sorry, I, I again, I once more. For the... ah! <laughs> I'm going to admit, so what was it? A BMW 3. I, I, I dove for that, for that edge there, but then the bike. Hit me on the back, so went, boom. Me in the head, I was like, Ooh. You see, when BMW sat down at the boardroom and came up with a concept of any of their motorcycles, they didn't really have this in mind. There was more to Brett's neck than just riding up a hill. A more unknown bit that we were led to thanks to our two DR kitted tour guides. And that's Ronnie's house. It's a mansion built by Ronnie Price, more commonly known as the eponymous Mr. Price. It's hidden in a valley between two mountain faces. It's interesting and glorious and somewhat unfinished. 80% into the build, the government informed Mr. Price that he was unfortunately constructing above the building line and had to stop where they were. At least we had something interesting to look at. From Ronnie's house, the ride continued, going up steps, bumps, rocks, and hills, all with an underlying theme of icy mud. I'd suggest that persons without superhuman skill riding big adventure bikes might find all this a tad tricky, but Ferrari gobbled it all up gleefully, not missing a beat. We then reached the top, overlooking the glorious Northwest province, and met some new friends, who had ridden up with big adventure bikes and were ceremoniously covered in mud, like we weren't. After some scenery gazing, we descended the other side of the pass, again galloping over steep rock sections and mud with ease, until eventually we emerged at the tar road at the base of the pass. It was here that we met a burbul, with a monkey on its back. Look, there's a monkey sitting on the back of this dog. And that was Breed's Neck Pass. While it isn't the longest pass in the world, it's convenient for Joburgers and surrounding citizens. It's good fun and a great day out on motorcycles. And once more, Ferrari arrived completely unscathed and unabashed. We were happy. So we celebrated in the best way possible. We rode back over the pass again. 
Don is definitely enjoying his riding life on the Hero Expulse, and so far it is taking him, without any unnecessary drama, wherever he wants to ride. I know he's got a couple of even more adventurous excursions planned, so we'll have to uh, see if his hassle-free exploration continues, or maybe his Ferrari will start to struggle. If Hero Factory Rally Raider Ross Branch is the Kalahari Ferrari, does that make our resident eating machine the Calamari Ferrari? The public has a right to know. And on that slightly fishy note, we've reached the end of this week's show. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next week for some orange SAS adventures and some castles. Cheers for now.